Hey guys, welcome to video number three in my Linux for Beginners series. In the previous video, I showed you guys how to set up your own cloud Linux instance. And in this video, this is for those of you that prefer to have a virtual box, virtual machine instance local on your computer. So either method is fine. It actually doesn't matter how you get Linux on your system as long as you have some sort of distribution of Linux to use. And again, in the last video, I, I showed you how to do that in a VPS. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that in VirtualBox. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here on the Oryx Pro laptop from System76, I'm going to show you the process of setting up VirtualBox. So first I need to open a browser. And this laptop shipped with Pop! OS, which is a distribution based on Ubuntu. It ships with Firefox by default. So what I'm going to do is do a search for Zubuntu, which is X-U-B-U-N-T-U. -U -U, and that's the name of the distribution we're going to download. And it's just Zubuntu.org, as you can see right here. Hopefully you can see it. The text is kind of small. But basically, this is a distribution of Linux based on Ubuntu. So Pop! OS, the distribution running on my laptop, is based on Ubuntu as well. But I went with Zubuntu as my recommended one right now because it's very lightweight. And I have no way of knowing if you have a very, po very powerful computer that could run any distribution in a VM or if maybe yours isn't as powerful. Either way, Zubuntu uses fewer resources. So I think that it's going to be the most likely to work on most of your machines. So I'm going to go ahead and download. So here on the download page, we're going to download 1804, which is the latest long-term supported release. There's newer versions available, but LTS is generally recommended if you don't have a preference. I'm going to scroll down a bit. And we want to download an ISO file. And what you're going to do is click on whichever of these selections here is closest to you. I'm in the United States, so I'll click on that. And we get an option to download. We have a bunch of files here, so which one do we download? Well, it's actually pretty simple. For most of you, you're going to want the AMD64 ISO file. If you have an older computer, you're probably going to want the i386 ISO file. Most computers nowadays support 64-bit. So for most of you, it's going to be this one right here. But again, if you have an older machine, you probably want the i386 version. So I'll click on the AMD64 ISO, and it's going to go ahead and download. It's a pretty large file, so it could take some time. It's a pretty fast internet connection here, so it's going to take a couple of minutes regardless. But the file that we need is downloading, but we do need some additional downloads here. We actually need VirtualBox itself. So virtualbox.org, press enter. And right now you can see that the latest version is 6.0. Depending on when you're watching this video, there could be a newer version, but they don't change very much. They do release newer versions periodically. But if you click on the download section right here on the left side, you'll see that we have an option for Windows, OS X, or Linux. Now I'm running Linux obviously, but if you're not already running Linux, you'll either download the Windows version right here, in which case you'll download an exe file. So if you're a Windows user, you already know what to do with that. For those of you using Mac OS, you just click on the OS 10 host option right here, and you'll get a DMG file. So if you're a Mac user, you already know what to do with that. I'm not going to download either of those though, because again, I'm on Linux, and I went ahead and installed it. Now, I'm going to show you the process in VirtualBox on my Linux machine here, but it's going to look the same even if you're on Windows or OS X. There's very minor differences. Now, regardless of your platform, I do recommend that you download this. It's the VirtualBox extension pack. This will allow things like USB to work. So we definitely want to download that. And we download this same package regardless of what our host operating system happens to be. So I'll click on that. And it's going to be an ext pack file, so I'll save it. And then I'll check my downloads here. So both of these downloads are completed. So obviously, if you download VirtualBox itself for your platform, you should see three. So I'll go ahead and close that. Now, I already have VirtualBox installed, so I'm going to go ahead and open it. 
And again, regardless of your operating system, this process should be pretty much the same. The only difference might be some of the decorations or the icons because your operating system, your host OS might be different. But the process itself will be the same. But I'm going to click on File and then Preferences. Now here you have an option where your virtual machines are actually going to be saved. I prefer to just have a directory called VBox. But you know, you don't have to change that completely optional. If you're OCD like me about these types of things, then uh, you might want to change that. But regardless, that's not why we're here. We, I actually opened this up because we need to go to the extensions section right here and then click on the plus icon. And then we're going to find the ext pack or extension pack that was downloaded. Now I'm already in the downloads directory, so we see it right here. I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to click install. I'm going to scroll down because I am a speed reader. Honest. I agree. And then I'm going to put in the password for my OS here. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and install. All right, done. Cool. That's all set. So now we're going to actually create the virtual machine that we're going to use to follow along with the tutorials. So I'll click on the new button right here. I'll just call it Zubuntu because I'm not very clever. And because it has Ubuntu in the name, it just defaults to Ubuntu, which is pretty much right because Zubuntu is based on Ubuntu. Not confusing at all. I'll click Next. And for RAM, it really depends on how much your host OS has available. The bare minimum is 512 megabytes. It might struggle at 512 megabytes, may not even install at all, but feel free to give it a shot at 512 and see if it works for you. But I wouldn't recommend anything less than a gigabyte, which is about 1,024 megabytes of RAM. Now this laptop has quite a bit available, so I'm going to give it two gigs of RAM. And if you have a pretty decently specced machine like I do, that's probably the best way to go. But we're not going to need any more than that. I'll click Next. And I'll leave the default, create a virtual hard disk. Click Create. Leave the default here. Next. Default to dynamically allocated. Next. I think 10 gigabytes is a little bit too small, honestly. I'm just going to make that 16. I think that's fair. I'll click Create. We can see our virtual machine is now created, but we're not ready to start it just yet. So I'll click on it to make sure it's selected, which it already is, and I'll click Settings. We have some optional things that we can configure here, one of which we go to Display. If you have the extra RAM available, I recommend you just increase that. The video memory will just help the graphical user interface look a little bit better and be more responsive. We don't really care about the graphical user interface in this video series, but you know maybe you might be using this virtual machine for other things. I don't know. But it's good to have if you can spare it, as is the Enable 3D Acceleration. This is all optional, so you didn't have to do any of that. Also optional, if you click on Network, if you want to use something like SSH to connect to this remotely or or any other kind of um, remote access, you might want to change this to bridged adapter. Again, completely optional. Now next, we have one more thing to do, and this is required. We need to click on Storage. And here where we see the CD icon, where it says Empty, we need to select the ISO image that we downloaded. So I'll click Choose Virtual Optical Disk File. In my Downloads directory, I have it right here, Zubuntu 1804. I'll click Open. We can see that that's now selected. I'll click OK. And we're ready to start up the virtual machine, so I'll click Start. And we'll just give this a moment to finish coming up. And we're going to go ahead and go through the install. All right, I'll click Install. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I've gone over this in other videos, but basically I'm just going to select the defaults. And feel free to change yours accordingly if your language or anything is different other than mine. But I'm just going to go ahead and click through this. And we don't need the third-party software here. Updates are probably not going to hurt anything. I'll click Continue. Erase Disk. I'll click Install Now.
I'll click on the area closest to me, which is about right here. This will set the time zone and whatnot. Continue. I'll, I'll fill this out right here. We don't have to be exact, but basically just set a password and don't forget what you type for the password. It's important that the passwords match. All right, so I have that filled out and it's installing. All right, so it's done, so I'll click Restart Now. And I'll press Enter. And here's the login screen, so I'll just type in the password that I chose when I installed it. And then up here at the top left, I can click on that, which is like an applications menu. And then I have my terminal emulator. I could double click here at the top edge of the window, make it full screen. And then I could type my commands like LS, for example. And you can see that I am able to run commands now in a virtual machine. And then when I'm done, I just simply click up here on the top left. Click right here where it says log out. And then I'll click shut down, which will actually stop gracefully the virtual machine. So there you go. Um, that was my video on setting up Linux in VirtualBox. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. So at this point, you should have your own Linux instance, whether it be a VPS, a virtual machine, or an installation on a physical computer to follow along with in this series. And in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and get started with Linux commands and uh, get our feet wet and dive right in. So go ahead and check out that next video, which should already be uploaded on my channel. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video, where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.